this is uh, the title of my uh, mm, talk, uh, Proof of Concept Verifying ABM with Analytical uh, Methods. And uh, this uh, topic uh, was given to me to by Asa. Uh, she uh, wrote the abstract. And uh, so uh, there are now uh, comments on this abstract on the slide. Um, what uh, I uh, would make a question mark behind this in red, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, my own comments are in blue. And uh, it is a little bit, you expect me to uh, uh, show you the uh, golden way uh, to heal the, uh, uh, your uh, uh, bad program and make it into a better program, and I'm afraid I can't do this. Uh, um, <laughs> and uh, so, uh, what I was expecting was not quite an expert audience. So, uh, I was more expecting uh, an audience with uh, uh, some uh, less background, and so. Uh, my uh, focus is more on visual tools than on real statistical methods. And uh, one warning I want to give you is uh, uh, check your random number generator. It's uh, just a, a simple, stupid thing to do. Uh, but uh, this was an example I uh, had in uh, 2006. And uh, uh, just on top of uh, uh, the simulation are the uh, 2000 uh, um, uh, polygons are simulated first and uh, you see the result and uh, there is another example by a colleague of mine and just by visual inspection you see even if you don't understand what the heat map is or whatever this is not random and so uh, please check your random number generator uh, so uh, and uh, so then I thought of ideas of uh, what you could do, um, and uh, there are some standard techniques. One of them is uh, just, just watch your agent. Uh, watch one agent. Uh, watch the agent as it moves, and uh, have a look at its trace. Uh, and uh, another uh, one is uh, just look at uh, the variables, how they look like, uh, how they develop. Does this look uh, sensible to you? If it doesn't, well, uh, something might be wrong. And uh, there is some uh, long-standing tradition of debugging. And debugging in the sense of uh, agent-based modeling is just writing a diary. Uh, you can uh, write a diary, and you see uh, the diary um, is uh, something you could even publish uh, in the end uh, uh, and you should do it in, in an intelligent way so at first you follow every step and then if you know that every step is okay uh, of the normal steps then you can uh, mm, make a stop uh, uh, whenever um, and something really is happening and then watch the uh, uh, more intelligent uh, um, uh, things uh, that go along. And this is what we've been doing as developers uh, uh, for a long time. And uh, this is nothing new, but uh, you can visualize that. And if you have several roles of your agents, you can uh, um, uh, watch every agent role. And a similar thing can be done for each cell. So uh, you can uh, write a, a visual um, make graphs uh, what happens in the cell and uh, I have a look if this uh, sound sense, uh, looks sensible to you and uh, you can even have diaries of a cell uh, which means you can have a protocol file uh, telling uh, what is happening uh, in the cell and uh, again you should look uh, at all sorts of cells if you do some raster based uh, modeling uh, that is. And uh, what uh, Isa maybe expected me to uh, say is uh, uh, try to construct artificial simple scenarios uh, 
Uh, so if you separate your data uh, from uh, your uh, modeling, uh, you can uh, put in a very simple landscape and play around uh, with this very simple landscape and have a look at uh, what happens there. And uh, you can see one of my examples when the agents were spreading from the middle uh, uh, in on a circle, on a uniform terrain. They didn't spread uh, uh, uniformly, uh, but uh, they uh, chose uh, certain directions, uh, preferred them. Uh, so uh, I'm running out of time. So this is the summary uh, and uh, the provocative. Uh, uh, I can't uh, find all your faults, I'm sorry, but... Uh, <laughs> And there are some methods uh, which help you to find uh, uh, the pr uh, errors in your program. Thank you. So the, the topic of testing is as boring as testing itself. Still, yeah. questions. <laughs> How can you tell when it's an error or emergence? Mm. Well, uh, you if it's an error or emergence, uh, something is emerging, uh, some uh, structure or some, what, what is emerging? So emergence is one of those properties that we talk about in agent-based models where it's the thing you're searching for. And the agents interact, you get this crazy thing. So with your check your random number generator, I assume the reason they published that paper as is, is because they thought it was an emerging property. Right? No, I think that was just a check on if the random generate, number generator gives you random numbers. Yeah. Oh, just a test on it. That is actually an issue. This is the, you basically hit the nail on the head. You can report results that you think are just showing us something unbelievably new, an emergent property of the system. And then it turns out that it's just an emergent property of your random number generator. Hooray! And that is an issue. And that's why using those methods, using the testing methods is so key. Because the more time we take, check on something, the more confidence we have. We'll never have 100% confidence. And there is one method that gives you 99% confidence. And that's if somebody replicates your model, preferably in another language and preferably using another method. Well, what I was trying to say is uh, uh, try to model first things where you know the result. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, there is yeah. no emergence. Uh, so uh, when I try to, uh, to model uh, spread into a landscape, uh, I, I knew the uh, landscape was uniform and my agents were uh, moving all uh, randomly. Uh, they should uh, move, uh, cover each raster cell uh, at an equal rate. So if they don't, uh, something is wrong with the model. Yeah, I think the first step you do is you run the model without the agents. And you know, if you have anything coming up, agent related, that means there's a massive bug in your code. And then sometimes you run your model with one agent and see what happens. And you know, and if, they, if that agent has babies, then there is some, definitely something wrong with your model. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, yeah, I think, you know, it's all coming up back to the discussion we had about, you know, the more parameters, the more difficult to find what's going on in the model, but that also means it's more difficult to find the errors. Yeah, and this is what I was getting at in, in my talk earlier, is that if you, uh, if you figure out what the mechanism is in your model that's actually causing something to happen, and you think you understand that, then you can create a simple scenario like, like, you know, this cone example here. And if you understand the mechanism, then you know what it will do on that little landscape. And if it doesn't do that, then you know that there's a problem and you have to go back and, and do it. But you need to demonstrate the, sort of, by focusing on that mechanism, you, you can sort of prove that it is doing what you think it's doing. Um, rather than just something weird and and I think it's bugged. really really worth distinguishing that knowing what the mechanism in the model is doing is, does not equate to knowing what the system was doing in the past, knowing what right. things were in the past. It's you understand what the model is doing. Well, this is the difference between uh, 
validation and verification. Absolutely. So uh, uh, I was talking about how you can test that your mm -hmm. ideas you had uh, are in the program. Yeah. Yeah. It is not about uh, uh, testing if your program uh, uh, is, has something to do with past reality. Mm -hmm. Because that will be the topic of the next presenter. <laughs> who uh, I would like to invite. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marilla. And in the meantime, as Florencia is setting up, um, the experience of other disciplines that have been doing simulation and modeling for decades now is the first models are always, there's always a bug in them. I mean, everything that we produce, everything that you're going to see on Friday, there, there is a bug somewhere there probably, so don't worry. People repeat the models, people build on the models, people find problems, problems in the models, it's just you, you need the early ones that are wrong in order to build them better and better. Maybe I'm being a bit too picky here, but in order to properly talk about bugs, we, need, we should define what the bug is. Okay. Usually in software engineering, having a bug means that the system is not doing something that is in the requirements. So do we have requirements for our models? Yes. For simulation, an error is when the intention of the modeler is not represented in the code, which means, so it's not that, it's not a syntactic error, those we catch immediately. What it means, what it means is, I think the model does X, but actually it doesn't. So the code does something different than I think, that I think it's doing. So I, re I then represent the results saying, oh, so this simulation does X, but actually it's not doing it. So I'm, I'm showing a result of another process, which I didn't know about. That's which an error. why we publish our code. Because then other people can look at it. And it's mortifying if you publish something and someone writes you and says, actually. <laughs> but it's why we do it, because it's for science, not for our egos. Yeah, it kills the egos very quickly. Yeah. Have we plugged OpenABM yet? Uh, I, I think I just said the open access, that should not be, that's not even a, an option. Everything that is coded, the code should go online. There's no discussion whatsoever about it.